Hello, this is Steve Walton from Tropic Heating and PatioHeat.com. Today we're going to take a look at this uh, uh, barn style um, structure here and kind of go through a couple of scenarios. I'm hoping not to convolute the, uh, the discussion here in reference to which type of heater to use. We've got uh, gas heaters and electric heaters. Um, those are the choices and I want to just kind of go through what the uh, I guess the benefit and the con would be um, in relationship to each one. So we have basically four different areas. We have this open uh, air area, we have the two small structure areas, or rather large structures, and then we have this uh, area that's got uh, covered uh, roof um, here, and it's rather slim, and it's dimension so this is go right into dimensions first of all the overall layout here I'm not going to get into this whole dimension here um, you can see that we have rather large you know right here we have 50 some odd feet um, plus this entry area and so we'll just go ahead and say this is you know roughly 50 by 50 here and um, obviously we have the structure inside of that space so it's not a true dimension yet but um, Height is one thing we want to look at when we're hanging a unit. So here we have 8, 7, 12 feet by, I think this is 20, 21 feet. And uh, here we have a height of uh, 8, 3 um, on the top of the structure. And then again we have, it um, looks like 30, 34 by 14. And then the last space that we're going to be looking at is the height of this uh, space here. Um, and that we have uh, this, what I'm going to consider all combustible here. And I thought that was actually a little bit higher than that. I'll have to check that out. But here we can see we have uh, 8 foot 9 at the height up here. So um, let's get rid of that for right now. And. We're going to look at this as area one. So let's say we um, put, you can see the architect had installed some um, electric heaters here and here. Um, and then I think there's one over here, or maybe two, but um, I'm going to go with one over here. So let's look at the uh, slimline. And I'm going to call that, uh, I think that's your slimline option one. So this is kind of uh, the layout that I see would work. You have the slimline, excuse me, you have the Infratech uh, freestanding mounts, pole mounts here. The slimline unit would attach to this bracket here. I don't have the bracket installed, but that's how it would kind of uh, fit onto the uh, post. It has a little mount right here. Um, and actually, I'd, in reality, it might have to be a um, W series, but the uh, footprint of a 4,000 watt unit is going to be exactly the same, give or take a few inches on each side. So it's not a big deal. But you can see here, if I give uh, dimensions as far as the height is concerned, uh, we have a height of come on, seven feet nine um, to the to the bottom of this um, bracket here. So looking at um, the ray or footprint of heat. You see that the coverage is very directional. This is fine, um, but uh, we're we're just getting this space here, this space here, and then partially or mostly this space here. So that's what we're getting with the uh, Infratech electric heaters. Let's just switch it over to um, the Sunglow now. See, I got this out. There we go. Sorry about that. So, uh, Sunglow. Um, obviously, I'm not placing the heaters in the same positions. Reason for that is um, coverage. You know, if I place the heater over here, obviously I'm casting most of the heat over here. So I'm trying to uh, get it more centralized. And these are just kind of my suggestions of where to place it. Um, these have the underground vault box, so you can uh, get all your um, utility, the gas connection would be below grade, 
and these actually pull out of the ground so if you wanted to clear the whole space uh, you could do that by quickly removing the heater putting the cover on and now you have just an open air space um, also I placed more units in different locations so I'm not quite sure if the the intent is to heat the whole entire space um, but again let's go ahead and see what kind of rays we're gonna have you can see that we have most of the uh, seating space covered here we have that same issue if you had a heater over here or uh, like the Infratech over here we're only covering 75% uh, let's say of the seating here um, if you put it over here and you had the unit that's going to be over here on at the same time it's going to be a very hot spot right here so that's why I'm trying to avoid placing the sun glow here because the Infratech is directional it goes this way only and that works out great but the sun glow has a you know round um, footprint of heat so that is the uh, the sun glow and let's go ahead and just look at the uh, uh, second um, area and we'll go ahead and put the uh, slim line in the second area so the second area is considered over here you can see with the slim line uh, we're able to tuck the heaters in nicely the seating is very uh, minimal here you can see we have just about five feet of distance here and um, I have these at roughly a, maybe a 20 degree tilt on the heater itself, um, 15, 20 degrees. These are 4,000 watts as well. And um, so you got the seating area here, here, and um, a few back over here that we're able to cover real well. So that would be your Infratech for that space now. Let's look at what a sun pack would look like in that same uh, space. So let's go over here. All right, so I have the brackets actually hanging out here because uh, I just didn't cut them off for this application. But over here I'm using um, S25s. The reason I'm using S25s is because I want to do a minimum height up here. Um, on on an S25, if I point the heater so that it's facing straight down to the ground, I'm able to, to main, maintain a minimum clearance of uh, 9 inches above the heater. And so that's really important um, because we don't want to, uh, we don't have, want these heaters to be sticking down too low into uh, the space here. You can see my window's probably not built to scale. This window might be a little bit further down. But <clears throat> Looking at the ray, you have plenty of uh, heat here with the ray. Um, in fact, you have kind of like a lot, lot of overage um, on this space here. A couple things we have to look out for is the placement of uh, this edge of the heater right here in relationship to this post and this post here. So that might be a problem. We need to maintain 48 inches. Um, from the face of the heater on a direct path. <coughs> Excuse me. So, you know, I, um, I'm not sure if my uh, device will let me to allow me to do that. So let's check to see what I can do here. If I can get into here, and so we're at just n under two feet, and really you want 48 inches. Um, so you would have to either change the angle, which would increase the clearance up here. Once you change this angle, the clearance has to be increased by four additional inches. So if we took this, let's say, and you know changed it, um, see if I can do that real quickly. I'm just going to do it haphazardly here, but let's just say we do uh, you know a 20 degree tilt. And now we've got to bring this heater down four inches. Um, whoops. So I'm not going to use the do the bracket right this second, but you'll see that you know now your heater's really hanging down low, and I have them all going to that 20 degree tilt. So um, not a good thing, honestly. So 
I would avoid using the uh, sun pack on this space here. So let's go ahead and move along here. Um, all right, so these are the slim lines for these two places. Now, um, here on this side here, let's just get this uh, looked at real quickly because this is going to be simpler than the other side. Um, but uh, these are uh, 4,000 watt units again. And if we put a ray on here, you see we have nice coverage for this space, overlapping in the center, overlapping on both sides. Okay, and I'm going to just stop there and go right into the sun pack on this one here now so we stay with one area. So, um, let's see, I think that's there. So we'll go with the sun pack. Uh, so sun pack, I have S34s because of the height. I have them mounted on the cross, this, these supporting beams across here. And... Um, you can see my bracket six inches. This I have at four inches, so that might be an issue where you want to maybe beef this up a little bit or build some sort of um, support behind this bracket here. I also have the um, bracket cantilevered, so you'd have to take this hole that's existing and punch a new hole right around here so that you can get this angle um, on the bracket. Now, the reason I did that is because um, well, I'll, I'll explain that in a little bit here. But you can see that this is really overkill for this space. Um, a lot of heat, you don't need that much. Um, but if you eliminated one or two of these units, let's say we eliminate, well, let's just go into this one here, and we eliminate this one, this would be okay because we're only missing this spot right here. But, you know, then it looks out of balance. So I'm not a fan of that. But, um, you know, you couldn't really eliminate this one for instance because now you're missing the space on this edge here kind of um, so I think this is overkill um, you might get away with eliminating you know both of these as you can see here we almost are able to stretch it over to this edge here but I could say that these people on this side of the uh, structure versus the people on this side will be at different temperatures. They'll be much hotter over here and these guys are going to be much cooler. This is the farthest extent this ray comes out. So if you're sitting over here, you're getting the, the, the very minimum amount of heat. In fact, you know, you might not even get your body um, uh, warm because of the uh, height that you're sitting at. So um, in any case, the sun pack here is not my uh, favorite recommendation. We'll turn that off. Let me just go back here and put these back in. Okay. And then over here, um, again, we have Infratech, uh, 4,000 watts. I have the slim line. Um, I wanted to just talk about, uh, I'm not sure what the, if there's going to be roofing material on this project or not. I don't have that information, but if it's combustible, we need to maintain that clearance above the heater. So I have a six inch clearance, excuse me, above the heater um, here to here, and also six inches to the back. Um, you can see I'm with the, with the electric uh, units, I'm missing this whole uh, inner space here, but the seating is on the outside edge for the most part. So um, not too concerned about the center, um, but you know these chairs here and here again you're you're at the outer edge of that but um, it's not as uh, far away from the heater surface so you're you're not decreasing as much as you were on the example I was giving you earlier so but if there's a combustible material we need to really maintain that and this is go into the um, uh, sun pack here I'm gonna Click these off here. So, with the sun pack and these being S34s out here, I have a minimum clearance of um, 17 inches from this edge to any type of combustible above it. So that's why I, I came up with this method of cantilevering this uh, supporting bar here, um, using the 
OEM hole here, and then you'd have to punch a new hole right here to cantilever that out so that you can maintain that if you're going to use a gas heater. Now, gas heaters over here, you can see we have a lot you know, further coverage. We have a lot of crossover here. Um, and uh, this space isn't really being used, but it's being superheated. So again, it might be an issue where the gas heaters are maybe a little bit overkill for the space. Um, you could use the TSH where you could turn one to high and one to low. So you can, you know, this one would be high, this would be low, high, low, and then low, high, low, high. Um, that's something that can happen pretty easily. But again, we got to be concerned about the clearances to combustibles, especially if there's some type of combustible material above. And that's going to be true for this space over here as well. Any combustible material above here, that's why I have these angles, and that's why I have this cantilever here. Um, so that is what uh, um, I wanted to discuss today, and uh, hopefully this will help the architect out to make the final decisions on where to place the equipment, and um, we thank you for taking your time to watch this video. You have a great day.